Well, let's uh, let's flash forward a little bit. You know, uh, here you were as a little kid watching Jake DDT uh, Steamboat, a huge iconic moment. And now yep. uh, you and Jake become friends. What what did it look like whenever you and Jake first crossed paths? Yeah, it was it was it was absolutely never not weird. I um, the night before I was supposed to wrestle Jake, before I was ever going to meet him, the first time was in uh, the UK. And, you know, all that that business about don't aspire to meet your your heroes and idols, you know, in this case, you know, uh, was complete uh, bunk. Uh, he was a great guy. You know, he messed with me early on, but I was literally the night before I got concussed and I woke up in silly spandex and eyeliner in a British hospital and I kayfabe the promoter because I was damned if I wasn't going to wrestle Jake if he had gotten wind that I was, you know, you know, uh, out to out to lunch, me medically speaking. And we had this, uh, we had a match and he came up to me and he was, it was just not what I expected. You know, he was, he was kind, he was quiet, he was funny. Like he was really funny, which that threw me for a loop. And I remember thinking in my head, and I don't know how ridiculously masochistic or stupid this is, but I thought, whatever happens, I'll break my neck if it means taking that DDT right, making him look good. I just did not want to F that up. I don't know if I can cuss on here or not. Yeah, and, no, uh, yeah please do. Okay. Don't, don't fucking cuss. I'll do my fucking best not to. Thank you fucking much. Yes, yes sir. And uh, so he, I remember him explaining how he wanted me to take the DDT. And he said, look, the rest of it, we'll, he goes, I'm an artist. We're going to go paint a picture. This is our canvas. Listen to me. Uh, bring your instincts, but listen to me. And I said, okay. And, I, and I, he explained how he wanted to do the DDT. And I, I, to this day, I'll remember. He said, please don't roll. It, it looks shitty. I can't protect you. It makes me nervous that I can't protect you. I can't keep my eyes on it. I said, okay. He goes, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of that spike either. Very, very few people can make it look good. And again, I can't protect you. He goes, just drop, drop into a push up, and just turn, turn your head, turn your head into my, into my, into my side. I'll tap you. Just drop into a push up when I, when we go, I said, okay. And I didn't care for the life of me. You know, if I broke my neck, I was going to make, you know, this legend, my idol look as best as I could. And I remember doing the match and the match was great. It was fun. It was, it was a warm breeze. It was nice. Here comes the DDT. I did what he asked me to. I lived and he seemed to be happy and he rolled on me. And this is what was the most painful thing of not just that match, but of my entire friendship with Jake, the snake. So he pinned me and I, you know, I'm dead selling to, you know, to make this look as good as I can. Cause that's your, you know, the DDT is that's the deal. And I remember laying there and he like, I've got this soft, fluffy child beard that has grown out like this bird's nest. But if I shaved, I would be so soft of face where Jake has that old school steel wool, five o'clock shadow at two o'clock. And he rubbed his chin on my nipple and he giggled and he didn't sound like big, scary, ominous Jake. He sounded like the Beavis and Butthead thing. Like, <laughs> and he giggled knowing full well, I wouldn't move. And man, if that didn't just light me and my nipple on fire and it was so fucking painful and he just giggled and I just, I didn't flinch an inch thinking, son of a bitch, this is, this is art imitating life. I mean, this is life. Life is hard and unfair. And I, my nipple knew it full well that day. And still to this day, <laughs> it has nerve damage. I swear to God. Uh, cruel, but fair as they cruel say. But fair. So Jake, tell us a little bit about the nipple rib. How many guys did you pull on uh, th that one on? Oh, hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and let, let me throw a caboose on that. Just when I thought I was out of the water, he stuffed a 10-foot python down the front of my spandex. So there's that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is your first uh, time meeting Jake? Yeah. My first time meeting Jake. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'll, you'll and we actually – so he was he was kind of grumpy to me in the, in the locker room, and I just kind of – I I knew I shouldn't have let it get under my skin, but I just kind of – I just I – just, you know, to this day, I just have to giggle about it because he was just, he was the kindest, sweetest, most patient guy ever. You know, I can't, I just, I can't say it any other way. He put up with me, still puts up with me. So thanks, Jake. <laughs> I, he hates when I say this, but I will tell you, I, I refer to him as my fairy god brother, brother, brother. <laughs> in, in, in going on almost a quarter of a century of, of, of personally knowing him, you know, like I, I I've known him before he knew me. I knew him as a little kid from the other side of that TV. But over the years, you know, we've seen each other at our best and at our worst. And we've never to this day exchanged a shitty word to each other. We've never yelled at each other. We've never swerved each other. Uh, we've only ever helped each other. And he's, I, I dare say he's helped me a lot more than I've ever helped him. 
and he's, he's just a kind, kind man. And anybody that has crossed other paths with Jake, I can't speak to it because I've just I've never fucking seen it. Yep, and I can say from firsthand experience, I feel the same way. And you know, uh, I, I think that anybody who has an issue with Jake just doesn't know Jake. 